Hey you guys, it's Nurse Desi. I'm back with another vlog. If you guys are new to my channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Destiny. I'm a 22 year old registered nurse. I currently work in a medical surgical ICU and I'm currently on week eight of orientation. So if you guys are interested in knowing what it's like being in a residency program, what it's like being a new grad nurse, fresh out of nursing school. I just got out of nursing school um, December 2023, passed my NCLEX in January, and I started working in February. So if you guys are new to this channel, y'all like to see this type of content. And if y'all are in nursing school and you want to see some of my old vlogs, I did vlog majority of my nursing school journey. So go back and watch my old videos. And if you want to see this new journey of becoming a new nurse and learning how to navigate this nursing journey, like and comment comment on my video subscribe and let's get into this vlog bye okay you guys so today is april 20th so happy 420 to you guys um today is actually saturday and i'm off all weekend i have i have friday off saturday off sunday off and i'm off monday too so i love being a nurse that's the best part about being a nurse you get four days off in a row and it's the best schedule ever y'all so i got this whole weekend off today i'm actually going to six flags so i actually just bought a season pass because i'd be so bored like being out of nursing school y'all like you be having so much free time and you're like what do i do with all this free time so i bought a season pass to six flags so i'm about to be having fun this summer going out doing fun adventurous things so i'll be bringing y'all along today but um i actually like tomorrow i have to start doing a lot of work for for my residency program because i told y'all in my last vlog being in a residency you have a lot of like homework school work to do we actually have a medication test next month and it's going to be over 50 of the titratable drips i am in the icu and we work with a lot of drips that are like vasopressors sedation pulmonary hypertension meds just a lot of stuff so we have to be competent in all of the meds that we're giving so we have to pass our med test with over 80 percent and then the week after that i have a presentation and they actually assign us the topic so the topic that i got was liver disease and i also got esophageal varices and portal hypertension so the reason why they gave us that topic is because my job is specialized in transplants so we do get a lot of like, like liver transplants kidney transplants and we may eventually be getting lung lung transplants in the future so we have to know how to deal with patients that are in that disease process so i gotta do a whole powerpoint presentation and present it in front of my managers and my educator so i gotta start working on that very soon so i'm probably gonna start that tomorrow but today is fun day so i'm gonna bring out a six flags with me i'm gonna have a good time i actually didn't even vlog last week for y'all because i was so overstimulated i had so much like work to do i had my hemodynamics part two class and in that class we actually practice how to set up an a-line how to set up a swan catheter how to set up a cvp pressure and just working all the devices that we manage in the icu so that was a fun class and I actually the day before that class i had a patient that had a swan catheter if y'all don't know what a swan catheter is it goes in your pulmonary artery so it's a catheter that goes all the way in your heart like a central line typically like goes right above your right atrium the swan catheter goes all the way past your right atrium past your right ventricle up into your pulmonary artery to measure your pressures and we use it to diagnose patients with pulmonary hypertension so I had to set that up all by myself and that was before my class so I literally had to go like search it up on our um, education website and just figure it out but I figured it out and I felt like yeah I felt so smart like being in ICU and, and working those those hemodynamic monitoring like you will feel like a pro when you finally get it you will finally be like okay i can do this like it looks intimidating like just like having to manage the crt that machine it looks very intimidating but when you learn you feel so smart so last week actually went really good i've been taking two patients um and i have been managing a good like 80 to 90 percent of my patients by myself i only need my preceptor for like small things like if i'm trying to get labs stick a patient i may need her to help me but besides that like i've been really really managing my patients pretty good so i wanted to vlog this week um i do work tuesday and wednesday and then i work again saturday and sunday so I will show you guys how week eight goes in. I actually have a 16 week orientation. So this marks the half point 
of my residency. So that is like crazy to know that I'm halfway through orientation and I only have a month before I go to night shift. So exciting. I can't wait to go back tonight. If y'all don't know, I did work as a patient care tech before I became a nurse and I was working on my unit on night shift. So I miss my roots. I miss night shift, but I'm getting used to day shift. I'm getting used to all the doctors, the rounds, the family. It's a lot, but I just want to update you guys since I did not vlog last week, but let's go to Six Flags and let's go have some fun. So I'll see y'all. When it's been a few hours, been a few days. Like only been days, but it feel like months. I've been gone for a year, only go like once. Life move fast when you do what you want. I guess I'm doing what I want. Hope you know what you want. What do you want? Oh, no. My new bitch look like Tommy Berry. Good morning, you guys. So today is April 23rd. It is Tuesday and it is my shift one out of three. Y'all, I'm tired. Like I had a very fun weekend. I never even did an intro for like a lot of things I did this weekend, but I went to the lake and I'm looking at boats because this summer I want to rent a boat. So I actually went to the lake and then this guy let me look at his boat. So to see like how much the rentals would be. So that's going to be something fun I'm going to be doing this summer. But I went on a boat and then I was driving kind of by the lake and I was driving past his house and I saw they were having these open houses. So went in because I told you I was looking at houses last weekend because I'm thinking about buying a house not soon but eventually so i just wanted to see like what type of houses that i'm interested in and i like going to out open houses and just you know seeing what layouts i like and all that so it was actually a new construction home the whole neighborhood was like just getting built so i got to look at the first house that they had built and it was so nice like that really gave me inspiration and i'm really liking it like the price was good so i did a house tour and then after that, like I just did some um, like stuff that I had to do for, for my residency, some homework, some quizzes, modules, stuff like that. So 
Like, I was looking crazy this weekend. I didn't even want to come on camera, but I got it together. I washed my hair, straightened it. So, your girl is ready for work. So, I'm about to get put my pants on, y'all. But I'm hoping for a good day. This, this week is actually week eight. So, I'm halfway through my orientation. And pretty much, I feel like I am taking majority of like what, you know, I'm taking care of majority of everything involving my patient. I don't typically need my preceptor that much unless I have like something that's like really critical going on where I just don't know what to do type thing. So I feel like I've been doing really good. I'm praying for a good productive week and I'm finally, y'all, I'm finally getting caught on with like my time management charting like my preceptor was saying that the goal especially when you're on day shift is to like try to have your first assessment and have your meds and everything charted by 10 a.m now of course that's a perfect day like it doesn't always happen like that but if it can happen you're pretty much set up for the day like you just need to get that first assessment morning meds morning you know, charting and everything done by a certain time, like 10 or 11, because once you hit 12, then now you have your 12 o'clock assessment, your 12 o'clock meds, your 12 o'clock charting, then you got your four o'clock charting. And after that, like you're gonna be behind all shifts. So that's my goal. Um, I'm about to go downstairs and make my coffee. And of course I will come back and give y'all a shift recap of how, you know, my shift went. So. I'm gonna bring y'all downstairs so we can make this coffee and get out of here because it's what 5:35. I like to be at the house at like 5:45 so I can get breakfast and then go head to work. So talk to y'all later. Bye. Got some coffee. Yeah, every time I gotta wake up this early, I always be like, I'm so ready for night shift. Like, I only have one more month until I officially go to night. And I just feel like I won't be as tired when I wake up. Of course you're gonna be tired on nights, but I don't know. It's like, at least when you first wake up, you're not like exhausted how you are on day shift. Like 5 a.m., getting up at 5 a.m. is just crazy. But the coffee will get me through. I gotta make my water. Get my Stanley. Yeah, I'm glad I got the 30 ounce Stanley because it's just not as big to carry around. I already be having to get my lunch box and all this other stuff, so 30 ounce will do it. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Hey, you guys. So today is May 1st. And I know y'all are thinking, like, what happened to the vlog, y'all? Life started lifing. So I'm going to give y'all a little update. But I want to say happy new month to y'all. I hope you guys have a great May. I hope this month brings plenty of blessings. For y'all that's in school, I hope y'all wrap up this semester, pass your exams, pass your finals. Hopefully everything is going good for you guys. But y'all, I wanted to be transparent. I was going to just like scrap this whole vlog and start a new vlog because I haven't vlogged in a week and I just stopped in the middle of the vlog. And it's because y'all, I started having just a tough week. Like being a new grad is not easy. And I wanted to be transparent with you guys and just show y'all that like everything's not always exciting when you first get out of like you know of school and you start working like things do seem very happy in the beginning because you're a new nurse and you're just happy to be done with nursing school but y'all i probably have one of the worst two shifts that i've had like working period so the day that i left off i think it was like april 22nd or 23rd or something like that but i went to work uh, i think i worked two shifts that week and the first shift was actually pretty good. I had two patients. I did the majority of the work. And I had some really sweet patients. So I had a really good first day. But I started feeling like I was coming down with something. My preceptor was feeling sick. I started feeling sick. So that's really why I didn't feel like vlogging at the end of that shift. And then I came in on the second shift, y'all. And I was triple. So for y'all don't know, ICU, you typically only get two to... Um, 
two patients to one nurse, but if staffing is really bad or if something happens, the most that we can get is three patients, but they try to give you like more stable patients and not like really, really sick patients. But so I, I decided to take two and then my preceptor took one. So I'm balancing. It was a really busy morning because all the patients on the unit were really sick. And being on ICU, like, we do like to work as a team. So if one nurse is, like, stuck in her room because her patient's really sick, we will try to, you know, pick up where that nurse is, like, you know, not able to get to her other patient. So we really ended up having four patients because we picked up another nurse's patient because she had a very sick, very critical patient. So we're balancing. We're doing all this. I I go in to give my morning meds and my patient had two IVs in the ICU you typically need to have at least two IVs if you don't have a central line and my patient pulled out her IV and she had like IV meds that needed to go that weren't compatible so I'm like I need to get another IV in her y'all know I'm a new grad I'm not the expert at IVs in nursing school we really don't get that much experience putting in IVs like it's something that you have to you know get lots of practice in so I tried my best to see if I can stick her I went and got all my supplies tried to get an IV on her and I couldn't get it so we do have an IV team at my hospital I call the IV team and normally I would ask another nurse on the unit to see if she can try to stick my patient but I told you guys it was a very busy shift everybody was busy a lot of nurses were tripled I didn't want to be like you know pulling other nurses from their patients to try to get an IV if we have an IV team so I called the IV team she was kind of giving me like an attitude on the phone and she was like so so you can't ask your charge nurse to try to get the IV and mind you my charge nurse is dealing with the critical patient that was very very sick on our unit so I'm like well my charge nurse is currently busy in an emergency like I just need some help because this patient has time critical meds that need to be given so she was like okay I'm coming and so a nurse had walked past me and she asked me, hey, do you need anything? And I was like, oh, like, if you're not busy, do you think that you could try to stick my patient? Because the IV team hadn't came yet. So I found another nurse to stick her. The nurse actually was able to get the IV. So the IV team came in there like super late. She rolls in there and she sees the other nurses like currently putting in the IV. And she was like, I thought you couldn't find anyone to um, get the IV. And I was like, yeah, at first I didn't, but somebody asked me, you know, like if I needed any help and I found someone. And she was like, well, next time, like you need to learn how to put in IVs, this, this, and this. And she started like confronting me in the hallway like, I was just so offended. I'm just like, and instead of her just like saying, oh, okay, Ivy's already done. Like, I'm just going to move on to the next. She just kept trying to like confront me. And I'm just like, okay, like it is what it is. I told you I couldn't find anybody at the time. Somebody offered to help. I got help. Move on. Like go to your next patient. That is all you do is do IVs. This is your job. Why are you angry about putting your IVs? It doesn't make any sense. So she's like, have you ever put in an IV before? And I'm like, ma'am, I'm a new grad. Like, I need you to calm it down, like, right now. Because you're not going to talk to me crazy in the hallway. And she's like, well, like, you need to start watching people. If you're a new grad, you need to start watching people put in IVs. I know that. I know I need to start watching people. And I already do that. But you don't realize right now that I have four patients, really, and I'm trying to help, and I'm trying to give my morning meds, and I don't have time to sit around and just be standing there and watching people put in IVs. Like, I have patients to take care of. It's like, people is so rude. So that really threw me off. And then, it was already like a really busy day. Everybody's sick. Um, I ended up getting one of my patients transferred out. So I took over the patient that my preceptor was taking over, y'all. And then my patient that I took over ended up ha having to get intubated. And it was just super, super, super busy. And that was actually the first time that I have did the full intubation like by myself. Like I pushed the um, RSI meds, the paralytic, did everything. Like started my patient on propofol, fentanyl, like you know the whole vent order set. So it took a while to kind of stabilize that patient and I'm just like this is a lot like I really left this shit feeling kind of defeated and I was already coming down with something I was feeling a little sick 
so y'all I was really going through it and then I only had like my schedule for this past couple weeks have been really bad because I've only been getting one to two days off and then so I got two days off and then had to work a whole nother three days for the weekend back to back to back Thank God the shifts that I work um, on the weekend went really well. Um, I wish I would have vlogged it for you guys, but I was still feeling a little under the weather and my mood was a little down. And I really think like when you're a new grad, after graduation and after like the first couple months of residency, like that excitement starts to fade and you start to really realize the reality of like, I'm going to have to be doing this by myself in like a couple weeks. And I also got my full schedule because y'all know I will be switching to night shift. But I got my full schedule on I know the exact day that I'm going to be off of orientation now. And pretty much it's in June. So I will be off of orientation in June and it's already May. And I think reality just starts to set in. And I do have other friends that are um, like new grads in other places. And they told me that they're feeling the same way. It's like after that excitement phase and you start realizing like how much work it is being a nurse like and i love being a nurse y'all don't let me try to make you guys think that it's not a good profession it's a great profession but y'all you can leave work feeling mentally physically emotionally just drained and it is so it's just it's so taxing on your mental health y'all so I've been really kind of struggling a little bit these past couple weeks and I just cannot pick up the camera and I don't like getting on the camera if my mood is not you know good and positive for you guys I want y'all to get good energy I don't want to come on camera when I'm not feeling well and just having a bad day so I needed to take a couple of days to just kind of soak in and I did have a really good last couple of days I've been off for the last two days I go back to work tomorrow but I'm gonna try to finish this vlog out for you guys so i do work one shift tomorrow and then on friday i have a residency class so i'll go ahead and vlog that and then on saturday i'm finally gonna hang out with my friend i think that was another thing that has been getting me is that i've been so busy so you're not able to spend as much time with friends and family and that can also affect your mental health so me and my friend got plans to do something for Cinco de Mayo. So if I can, I'm going to try to get some footage on Saturday for you guys. And then I'll have this vlog uploaded by like at least Saturday or Sunday. So sorry for this long random break in the middle of the vlog. But I still wanted y'all to see the footage of the um, footage I got earlier for me at Six Flags. And just all the stuff that I did that weekend. So I'm just going to add this footage to that vlog. And I'll continue this vlog out for you guys. And yeah, so. So I will be uploading like some separate videos that are not vlogs of like I see you tips as a new grad. I just wanted to give myself a little bit more time so that I can come with some good videos for you guys. My nurse talks will be coming soon. And yeah, I'll get all those videos uploaded. So as I get some time, y'all, just give me some grace because I'll work like two or three days in a row and then only have one day to recover. And on that one day, you really just want to sleep because you're so exhausted from everything you did at work. So I'm just waiting on some days that I have like at least three days off so that I can recover and then make some videos for you guys. But I will see you guys tomorrow when I work and then I'll tell you how that shift goes. Good morning, you guys. Today is May 2nd and I'm on the way to my shift. So this shift is actually the last shift of the week. This is three of three. I did my first two this weekend, but I am, I got my hair done. I'm about to just do my little lip gloss. And then I'm about to head out. On the weekdays, I like to look really presentable because I'm talking to a lot of family. I'm presenting around, so. I feel like when you look good, you feel good. So that's what we have to do. I'm about to put on my Apple Watch. And I'm hoping, I'm praying for a good day. I slept really, really good. So that's always a good start. And then I'm gonna get some some food on the way. I don't know where I'm gonna get it at, but I'm gonna give me some breakfast. And then I did pack a lunch today. So we all set on that. And yeah, so I will let you guys know how today goes. I'm really, really praying for a good day because I'm tired. I just want to be done with this week. I still gotta do a class tomorrow, but at least I don't have to do a full shift. 
And then I really only get two, one day off on Saturday to hang out with my friend. And I got to work the whole weekend again. So the weekend shifts are actually not bad. I actually prefer to work on the weekends because it's so chill. And then, of course, you get weekend differentials. So you get way more money. It makes a big difference on your check. So we love that. But yeah, I will come back at the end of the shift or tomorrow and update you guys and let y'all know how today goes. Bye. Hey, you guys. So I'm out of my last shift for this week. And y'all, as y'all see, I'm happy. I am in a good mood. Today was a great shift. Like, I had really critical patience. And so, so I'm going to start off from the beginning. So I came in and my main preceptor, she actually called off today. She was sick. So they put me with my educator today. So my educators, they occasionally do like work um, in staffing. So I think they have to pick up like one shift every two weeks. So she came in today and then they put me with my educator. And I love our educators. So it's like today was just a great shift because who doesn't want to spend the whole day with the educator like they get to teach you things that you never learned before and sometimes every preceptor like doesn't know the full correct way of doing things so being with your educator like you get to learn a lot so I was with some really sick patients so she really gave me like autonomy I took over both patients um, my first patient was intubated on CRT if y'all don't know that is continuous dialysis that we run as ICU nurses. They're pretty much hooked up 24 hours so that their um, electrolytes can become balanced and also to pull off fluid for patients that are in flu like fluid overloaded. So I had that going on. Um, my patient was in septic shock, so the patient was on two pressors. So I'm titrating pressors. They're intubated, of course. The patient had like multiple surgeries, so I had a lot of drains, just a lot going on. So that was like the perfect example of like a very, very critical ICU patient. So I had that patient, and I also had a patient that had pulmonary hypertension, and they were on a prostacycline. And if y'all don't know, that is like the medication that we use to treat pulmonary hypertension. And pretty much how we do it is that it's a very, very critical medication because it is dilating your pulmonary artery for patients that have pulmonary hypertension. And if that patient does not get that medicine, like it, it's continuous over 24 hours. And if anything happens to that medication, y'all, the patient can instantly die. Like it's very serious. So patients will typically start them on a regular IV pump. And then once they're able to tolerate the medication, because it has bad side effects, y'all. It can cause you to be like nauseous, hypotensive, bradycardic, get very, very sick, diarrhea. It just has horrible side effects. So we have to monitor the side effects and then titrate up until your patient gets to the goal. And then when they get to the goal, we transition them over to a cat pump. And the cat pump is unfortunately something that they have to have for life. Like they have to be on that pump 24 seven, even when they go home. And we have to educate them on how to use it, how to change out the medicines and just pretty much do everything. So that when they go home, they know how to operate that pump. So. I had a patient that was on that medication and the patient was actually on the IV version so I was titrating up and then I actually got my patient to go and I was able to switch the patient to the cab pump and that was my first time ever doing that like I had a patient that was already on a cab pump but I've never been the one to switch the patient from IV to cab pump so great learning experience and I just love learning new things in the, um, in the ICU because it's like there's no way that we're going to learn everything while we're in orientation but when you do learn something that we don't always do it feels good because you know like okay if I ever get this patient I know what to do like I at least have this you know skill under my belt so like I always tell people like don't go into orientation thinking that that, that you have to master everything or you need to know everything before you get off orientation but as long as you learn like one thing a day that's good enough like just take away something so that like by the time you're at the end of your orientation you'll have a good amount of, of knowledge and then the things that you don't know like you have to use your resources like your charge nurse your other nurses on the unit and people are very helpful like they're willing to explain to you things that you've never seen before so it was a great day y'all so I was like pretty much balancing I was mainly in my very critical patients room and 
and the base was pretty stable for the majority of the shift and then towards the end y'all I tried to turn the patient to do a bath and y'all all went everything went to the shit <laughs> excuse my language but ICU patients are so so sensitive like any slight movement change can cause their fluids and their body to switch and everything can start going wrong so the patient kind of decompensated so I had to you know get a chest x-ray do an ABG the patient had to go up on oxygen it was just a lot going on during the last 30 minutes of my shift and I hate when that happens because I like to leave the patient like you know feeling good and looking good when night shift comes in but that doesn't always happen so I was able to figure out what was going on got the patient stabilized before night shift came and I gave handoff to both of the night shift nurses and everybody just saying I'm doing very well oh and y'all totally forget I, I also did a bi-weekly um, with my manager I told you guys in some of my other um, my other videos that we do bi-weeklies every two weeks to check in with our managers to see how we're doing and how we're progressing and y'all I love the bi-weeklies like I love to vent with my manager I really love my manager she's so easy to talk to she's like such a good manager y'all I could have not asked for a better manager but it just feels good to be able to like talk to your um, educator and your manager about the struggles of a new grad and being transparent with them and you know they always give me such good advice and they just let me know that like I'm doing good and it's okay to just not know everything like I told them sometimes like I'll feel like I need to do everything and y'all know that nursing is a team effort so if you need to ask for help from your techs from other nurses or from your charge nurse your RT whatever the case is like ask for help do not be drowning and then like you know just feeling so overwhelmed instead of just asking for help so I'm getting in the habit of doing that I was really like using my resources today and I had such a much like a, such a better day y'all so just take that advice as a new grad delegate you know use your resources now don't overdo it don't just be overworking people because you're lazy like don't do stuff like that but if you really need help and you're struggling y'all just use your resources so great shift um, I'm actually back again for a, a residency class so I will see you guys in the morning but I just want to give you a shift recap so bye y'all so today's May 3rd and it is Friday and today is my class day so we actually have two classes my first class is going to be just a one hour class and it's on my unit and it's pretty much going over the a to f bundle and a to f bundle is pretty much things that we're supposed to be doing as icu nurses to prevent our patients from getting delirium so if y'all don't know patients that are intubated in the icu are just really really sick they can suffer from delirium and it can it can really affect their um mental health like they'll forget where they're at sometimes they can become very combative and it can also take them a long time to get weaned off the vent because they're not aware of you know what's going on where they're at so there's like some ways that we can keep our patients from getting delirium so like during the daytime trying to open up the blinds try to do a SAT or SBT and that means a spontaneous awakening trial so you turn off all sedation propofol fentanyl try to wake the patient up and then a breathing trial is to try to get them extubated so they're not intubated for as long on night shift try to promote like a healthy sleep wake schedule so turn the lights off allow them to get sleep so that when they are awake they'll they'll be fully rested and it's just a lot of things that we can do also like trying to get them mobilized so even intubated patients can get out of bed and can also get up in the chair or if you can't get them fully out of bed then you can like put their bed into a chair position just trying anything to like reorientate the patient and make sure that they understand like where they're at and that they're able to get weaned off the vent in a proper time so we're gonna have a um a education session with our educator on just some ways that we can implement the bundle and then after that class we have a residency class and i told you i never really know what the topic is going to be on the residency class so i'll let y'all know but um today's like the last day of work this week and i'm probably trying to get this vlog out probably today and then i'll start a new vlog 
um, tomorrow. So since it's taking me so long to put out a video, I want to get this vlog out. And I also wanna thank you guys. Yeah, we just hit 2K subscribers. And y'all, I've been loving the feedback. Y'all have been loving like my how to study in nursing school videos. So I'm also gonna start putting out like an ICU nurse series. So I'm gonna give you guys like a two month update of being a new grad in the ICU. And then also some ICU tips as a new grad. So be looking out for those videos and thank you so much for the support. I'm sorry for this long break, but y'all know sometimes you gotta take a little break for your mental health. So I'm gonna I'm talk to you guys like when I get out of this class and update you guys on what happened. Bye. Hey you guys, so I'm out of my residency class and y'all, today was a great class day. I feel like out of all the classes we've had, this was one of the most beneficial classes that we've had in a while. Um, I told y'all that I had to do one hour class with my, my unit educator on Ada F Bundle. And then the second part of our class was a residency um, seminar. And the topic of the seminar was prioritization and delegation. And y'all know in nursing school, they hone in on that. But like, when you actually become a real nurse, things look very different than nursing school. Like, you know, in nursing school, they'll tell you, oh, ABCs is priority. In real life, that's not always the case. You have to delegate and prioritize based off of other things. There's other emergencies just from airway and breathing and circulation. Sometimes there's some things that can trump that. So it's a lot that that um, goes on with learning how to prioritize as a nurse and you have to sometimes learn how to delegate to other nurses or your techs, RT, everybody. So that was really good and she also went over some charting tips to help us because we do not talk about charting y'all. I really feel like charting should be a whole class in nursing school because it's your license on the line and you do not want to be fighting for your license in court because you charted the wrong thing. So. But so the first part of our class, y'all, it went so good. I told y'all that I knew about the A to F bundle and things that we're supposed to be doing as ICU nurses to prevent our patients from getting ICU delirium and getting confused and disoriented. But y'all, I learned so much that I did not know beforehand. And me and my, my residency group actually decided to do our residency project on A to F bundle after doing this class because we learned so I told y'all that um, like A to F pretty much it stands for different um, intervention that we can do as ICU nurses to help prevent our patients from getting confused. So A stands for assess pain, B stands for an SAT and SBT, so that's spontaneous awakening trial and um, spontaneous breathing trial. C stands for choice of sedation, um, D stands for assessing for delirium and then E stands for early mobility and F stands for family so those are all of the interventions that we can um, do as ICU nurses so we are gonna um, split up the bundle between all of us and I got C for choice of sedation and that's really big because y'all I learned so all our patients that are intubated typically get a vent order set and the, the type of drugs that we use to keep our patients sedated is usually propofol and fentanyl. So most of our patients are always on a continuous drip if they're intubated. But what I did not know is that just because a patient is intubated, you do not always have to keep them on those drips. So in the morning, we are supposed to be doing a SAT and a SBT on pretty much all the intubated patients unless there are active reasons why they should not be getting woken up. So if they are paralyzed, of course, they shouldn't be getting woken up. If they have an open abdomen, if they're fresh out of surgery, if they're very critical, if they're having active seizures, like all of those are reasons why of course you don't want to be waking them up in the middle of a crisis. But if they are stable and they're on the vent, you should be trying to wake them up. So we will come in in the morning, turn off the purple salt and the fentanyl and just see what the patient does. It's a way for us to like assess their neural status and just making sure that they're still in there even though they've been like kept under a lot of sedation. But when your patient starts to get agitated or if they're not tolerating being taken off, first thing that you should treat is pain because pain is number one reason why the patients are getting agitated. So instead of like going up on your propofol, you need to be treating pain first. So they will prefer us to do like fentanyl bolus. 
glycolysis versus continuing to go up on your fentanyl drip because the more of the medication patients get in their system it can increase their odds of getting delirious and having all these bad side effects like trying to withdraw off of these meds it's just a lot that goes into it and sometimes like, all of our nurses if, if they see a patient getting agitated they're instantly just going up on their drips going up on all these medications and that's not always the first thing we want to do like we want to make sure that our patients have a quality of life when they get out of the ICU and sometimes the effects of the ICU can can be life altering for life like patients can get out of the ICU not know how to walk because every day that a patient is in the ICU um, it takes them two weeks to recover just from one day and some of our patients are on the ICU for months so if you think about the recovery process you want to make sure that you're mobilizing those patients like even if you have to do passive range of motion like if they can't get out of bed you still want to do some type of movement because their body is breaking down their bones and their muscles in order to fight the illness so it's just so much that I learned so I'm really glad that we are doing our presentation on this um, our residency is I told you it's a year long so we have a class every single month and at the end of our residency we will do a presentation so we will be doing our presentation on um, the ADF bundle so I'll keep y'all updated on how that goes but I'm glad I had this class because my um, charge nurse was telling us that she wanted to present this because after COVID a lot of these practices have not been being done because y'all know COVID was just devastating like a lot of their staff were being um, overworked because there wasn't enough staff people were getting sick people were dying and people did not think about the ways to prevent some of these um, effects of ICU patients and since then they haven't been being implemented how they should be so she wants us to learn as new nurses so that we implement this in our practice and we're always doing it and I didn't know that doing spontaneous um, awakening trials and breathing trials are nursing driven interventions so we don't need a doctor's order to turn off all of the um, the drips to wake the patient up as long as it's not contraindicated so there's a lot of things that we can do as ICU nurses just based off of our own judgment so we can get a thorough assessment on our patients so I just really really enjoyed this class and then even the second part of the class where I talked about like delegation prioritization like it was a good class because she pretty much gave us like patient scenarios like say you have a patient that is um, has a trait that need to be suctioned and have a time critical med do but then you have another patient that just went into VTAC and their blood pressure dropping who do you see first you know those type of like nursing school questions but these things happen all the time in ICU like you have two critical patients and so sometimes you're in your room and your other patient has something going on but you cannot leave your room because there's something more critical going on like what are you gonna do you have to delegate you got to get another nurse hey can you get my meds in that room my patient's calling for pain medicine the patient needs to be suctioned can you suction this patient out like there's stuff you have to delegate because not everything can be done like nursing is a team effort as we all know so I'm finally getting comfortable with delegating and not feeling bad about it because sometimes like having to delegate will make you think like I cannot handle this I cannot be a nurse because I need to ask people for help but don't feel like that y'all like it's a 24-hour job so today was a good class y'all it was a great great class but I know this vlog is getting really really long I told you guys I was gonna vlog tomorrow but I think I'm gonna add that to our new vlog because I want to get this vlog out for you guys today I got some time I got out of this class early so I want to get this vlog out but thank you guys for watching my channel I got videos for y'all coming soon thank y'all for being patient and I hope y'all enjoyed this video see y'all later